What up, what up, what up, YouTube? What up, what up, what up, YouTube? You click the title, you read the page. 10 countries where Americans are not allowed. Listen, um, yo, America be bugging out. I ain't gonna lie. At first, I thought like it'd be the other countries, but not, not, it'd be us. We be bugging out. Cause we just, we just be doing too much. And it's just like, why are we always doing too much? So, um, if you're anything like me, I love to travel. So, I think it's only right that we shine light on where we Americans are just not safe. And I'm going to be real with you. Every time I travel out out the country, I just I don't feel safe. Because not a lot of people like us. I don't know why. I mean, we're such good people. Right. Subscribe for the vibe. Let's get to it. Hope you're feeling good. Hope you're feeling great. We're going to roll to 4,000 subscribers. Depending on what channel I put this on, it could be 6,000 subscribers. Either way, subscribe for the vibe. Make sure you got your blunt ready. Make sure you got your uh your dress, whatever it is you want. Cause it's gonna be a good one. So sit back, relax, smoke the dope. <laughs> you gotta love it here. You gotta. This video, we are going to discover the top ten countries where Americans are not welcome in 2024. He said 2024. We're not. We're, we're never welcome. I'm telling you, these places hate us. I'm just telling y'all right now. Today, we're venturing off the beaten path to explore 10 countries Americans can't travel to or move to easily. At Discover Top 10 Places, we love to celebrate the freedom and ease of travel. But geopolitics sometimes has other plans. Buckle up, because this journey is all about those notoriously tough Boy, if you don't get to the point. places for U.S. passport holders to access. Kindly make sure to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon before we start this video about the 10 countries where Americans are not welcome in 2024. Now let's dig deeper into each of the top 10 countries where Americans are not welcome in 2024. Number 10. Venezuela. Rounding out our list is Venezuela, a South American nation fa- No way. Yo, I thought we was cool with Venezuela. I always wanted to go to Venezuela. Venezuela. Like, what you mean? What we do? Yo, we always doing something. Can't stand us. Famed for its striking natural beauty ranging from the Andes Mountains to the Caribbean coastline. Venezuela has unfortunately been in the throes of a political and economic crisis for the past several years. Grappling with economic collapse and political instability. With the ongoing crisis, the U.S. Department of State advises against all travel to Venezuela due to crime, civil unrest, poor health infrastructure, kidnapping, and arbitrary Well, you ain't gotta tell me twice I will not be going. Cross that off right off my list. Not kidnapping. I know you're thinking, damn, T.T., he said all of that and he got you. Kidnapping got me. That, that's why I drew the line. Arrest and detention of U.S. citizens. As an American citizen, you will need a visa to enter Venezuela. But getting hold of one can be a complex process due to the absence of a Venezuelan embassy or consulates in the U.S., following the breakdown of diplomatic relations between the two countries in 2019. Visa applications must be made through... Yo, drop a comment like, did you ever plan on visiting uh, Venezuela? All right, let's go somewhere. Number 9. Libya. Like Syria, Libya is another country where ongoing... You sound dumb if you ever thought I was even thinking about going there. Wasn't Conflict makes it, it a no-go zone for American tourists. The U.S. Department of State strongly warns against all travel to Libya due to crime, terrorism, kidnapping, and armed conflict. The 2011 Libyan civil war and the murder of the U.S. ambassador during the Benghazi attack have greatly strained Libya-U.S. relations. Obtaining a tourist visa for Libya as an American citizen can be a complex process. Tourist visas aren't being issued at present due to the ongoing political instability. Number 8. Syria. War-torn Syria is a high-risk area that the Definitely wasn't planning on going there. U.S. Department of State advises against traveling to due to terrorism, civil unrest, kidnapping, and armed conflict. The Syrian civil war, which began in 2011, has severely strained Syria-U.S. relations. Although the war has significantly decreased tourism, it's still technically possible, but highly discouraged, to obtain a visa through a lengthy process. Obtaining a visa for Syria as an American is a complicated and lengthy process. Applications must be made through the Syrian embassy in your country of residence. In the case of the U.S., this is a challenge, since the Syrian embassy in Washington, D.C. suspended operations in 2014. 
So you'll have to apply through a third country that. Don't worry, we wasn't planning on visiting next. Number seven, Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan, therefore, travel to. Where is that? What? I never even heard of this place. The Central Asian nation known for its eccentric former president and the flaming door to hell crater is next on our list. This land of vast deserts, ancient ruins, and striking modern architect. Oh, it looks beautiful. This looks beautiful. This is like, this is like I'm in Mario Land. No funny. Like I feel like the princess about to come, and I gotta save her. So I don't know. It's like Mario. Sure, is undoubtedly one of the most challenging countries. I feel like Luigi about to come out and say, "I the winner." Or is that Mario? Do Mario say, "I the winner"? Or is that Luigi? And I think Luigi be like, "I the winner." Yeah, I feel like Luigi about to pop out somewhere. for Americans to visit due to its strict visa policies and the government's general wariness of foreign visitors. The U.S.'s diplomatic relations with Turkmenistan are limited, with human rights and democracy issues being major sticking points. Its stringent visa process is a legacy of its Soviet past and present-day autocratic rule. Unlike many countries that offer an online application process, Turkmenistan requires you to apply through an embassy or consulate. In the U.S., this is the Embassy of Turkmenistan in Washington, D.C. The requirement for a letter of invitation often proves the most challenging part of the visa process. You'll need to arrange your tour through a Turkmen travel agency, which will then apply. Hey, well, I actually would want to go ahead because how beautiful it is, but not after hearing what all that, they don't fuck with us, so I ain't going. Next. Number six, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia used to be a tough nut to crack for American tourists due to it. Hey, yo, not a tough nut to crack. What's happening? Its restrictive visa policies. The country, governed under strict Islamic law, had traditionally limited visas to business travelers, Hajj pilgrims, and family of residents. But in 2019, Saudi launched a new tourist visa to attract foreign visitors as part of its Vision 2030 program, aimed at diversifying its economy beyond oil. In a significant break from its past restrictive policies, Saudi Arabia now allows Americans to apply for a tourist visa online. The application process. Well, that ain't bad. At least you could do it online, you know. So that's that's good to know. But I, I mean, I, they don't like us. <laughs> Listen. Number five, Eritrea. What? On the Horn of Africa, we find Eritrea, often dubbed the North. Oh, okay. <laughs> Korea of Africa, due to its reclusive policies and autocratic governance. The U.S. and Eritrea have a strained relationship due to various issues, including Eritrea's human rights record and detention of U.S. embassy local employees. Obtaining a tourist visa for Eritrea is notoriously difficult, with approval often arbitrary. Even with all required documents, there's no guarantee of approval. It's also worth noting that the processing time can be quite lengthy, often taking several months. And even with a visa, your freedom to explore Eritrea is limited. To travel outside the capital, Asmara, foreign visitors need to obtain a travel permit from the Eritrean government, which can be a lengthy and uncertain process. Right, uncertain. You do all that just to get told no. Number four, Cuba. Yo, I, nah, I could have sworn we could visit Cuba. I thought we was cool. Who went to Cuba? Then one day we have a president that went to Cuba and we was cool with them. Damn, man. I always wanted to go to Cuba so I could be like bad boys too. Remember when they was in Cuba and all that and they got a little ghetto and all that? Although relations between the U.S. and Cuba have thawed slightly over the years, travel restrictions persist. A relic of the Cold War, the U.S. embargo against Cuba, known as El Bloqueo locally, prevents American tourists from visiting purely for tourism. But Americans still can visit under one of the 12 authorized categories. These include family visits, journalistic activity, professional... Damn, I gotta have a specific reason to visit Cuba. It can't even just be, I want to tour. You can't even go there for tourists. You just heard them. That's messed up. That's crazy. I guess we can't go to Cuba, guys. Drop a comment if you ever wanted to go to Cuba, because I sure did. National ...research, religious activities, public performances or competitions, and the most commonly used, support for the Cuban people. This last category requires that travelers maintain a full-time schedule of activities that support Cubans and promote Cuban civil society. What? Nah, they bugging out. I'm not coming here just to be... No, they sound dumb. Are you dumb?
Activities can include staying at a casa particular, private residence, eating at paladas, private restaurants, shopping at private markets, or engaging in discussions with locals about their lives and society. Once you have determined your travel category, you'll need to obtain a Cuban tourist card or visa. They doing too much. It's like if I gotta do all of that, I don't wanna go. If I gotta do all of that, I don't wanna go. Most travelers can get the tourist card through their airline when they book a flight to Cuba. The card is pink for those flying directly from the U.S. and green for those flying from other countries. Some airlines include the cost of the card and the ticket price, while others require a separate fee. Number 3. Bhutan. Moving on to the serene Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan. Oh, that's beautiful. Bhutan. The difficulty in traveling here is not politically motivated but rather a consequence of their unique tourism policy. To protect their environment and culture, Bhutan only permits a limited number of tourists each year, with Americans required to pay a daily fee of $200 to $250. I gotta pay to stay on top of my hotel and my flight and my food. I gotta pay to stay. I ain't visiting. Nope. They don't like us. This policy, called high value number two, Iran. Next up is Iran. Oh, you would be crazy as hell to be an American and go to Iran. Iran, whatever. You would be crazy. Iran, a country brimming with historical sites and warm hospitality, but fraught with diplomatic hurdles for Americans. The 1979 Iranian Revolution led to strained relationships between the two nations, with the U.S. imposing heavy sanctions on Iran over nuclear disputes. Traveling to Iran isn't impossible, but you'll need to book a guided tour and undergo a lengthy visa process. Diving into the intricacies of traveling to Iran as an American, the journey begins even before setting foot in the country. The process to get there is anything but straightforward. Independent travel in Iran isn't allowed for U.S. citizens. All travel must be part of an organized tour led by a government-approved guide. Your tour company will provide a detailed itinerary for your stay in Iran. This itinerary is not only a requirement for your visa application, but it must also be strictly followed, leaving little room for spontaneous exploration. Guided tours of Iran can range from general cultural experiences to more specific interests such as culinary or adventure tours. Number 1. North Korea. Top of the list. Wow, I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't. I really wasn't. I don't know why. I mean, yeah, I, I guess because I, I mean, I know we always had like this big deal with Korea. I'm not really into politics too much, but now I'm curious, so I'm going to do another reaction video on why. But I'm pretty sure he's going to break it down, but I'm going to get down to the rice and beans. We're going to do our research. We have North Korea, or as it's officially known, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, DPRK. Prior to 2017, a few brave souls could visit North Korea through guided tours from China via direct flights. Not brave souls. <laughs> Yo. From Beijing or over the Yalu River by train from the border city of Dandong. North Korea's isolationist stance, the result of a political doctrine called Jush, along with ongoing tensions with the U.S., largely contributed to the travel restrictions. But now, North Korea is top of the list for countries Americans can't travel to easily. The current travel ban started with the heartbreaking and cautionary tale of Otto Warmbier, a young American who experienced the severe consequences of this nation's rigid political system firsthand. Warmbier, a University of Virginia student, visited North Korea as part of a guided tour in late 2015. Damn, that's where my girl from. 2015. In early 2016, he was arrested at Pyongyang International Airport while attempting to depart. The North Korean government accused Warmbier of committing a hostile act against the state by allegedly attempting to steal a propaganda poster from his hotel. After a one-hour trial, Warmbier was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. Oh no. Oh no. I don't know. That made me not want to travel nowhere outside of America. 15 years for stealing, for allegedly taking a poster from a hotel? Yo, you know we be stealing all types of toiletries, all types of wires from the hotel. Y'all still the wires? Me neither. Earth. Now, Americans wishing to travel to North Korea must obtain a special validation passport from the U.S. Department of State, only issued under very specific circumstances, such as for journalists covering the region or for humanitarian aid workers. Well, that's all we have for you today. Yo, that is shocking. Y'all subscribe.
ஒரு வாய்ப்பு